Hi everybody, it's Tracy here from Art Fiber Stitch. We're just having a quick catch up here of part one. We created this lovely background using all different tones of see-through fabrics. We went from white through some pinks, through some shears of all different kinds and then some black. And we overlaid the whole thing with a, a pink organza when we used fusible web to hold it all together. Now what do I mean by tones? Look at this, dark to light, tones of the one colour range. And here we have mid, light mid and dark of a blue. Now when I look at this, what do I see? I see something that's pretty light to mid. It needs a bit of oomph, doesn't it? Or a bit of bright white. So I'm looking at colours and I'm seeing what I have. I'm bringing out some rusty colours from it. That would bring a bit more colour in, but it's also, you know, a tone up in from that that peach. I'm also grabbing some of that grey because it went grey when we put that organza uh, layer on top. So I've got a dark grey and a mid grey there. I'm grabbing something else as well. I can see a yellowy tinge on one of those uh, one of those round circles of silk that are underneath. It's a greeny colour. I'm just going to bring something like that in as well, I think, maybe. And here is a variegated stranded cotton, and it's from rust through to cream. There's a mixture there, and another green. So I have something to get me started. Now I'm going to start, but I have two things in mind. One, I want to bring in more, more colour, more dark or light or bright, you know, better tones. But our background's really interesting as well, and I want to use that, I want to see things in it and uh, bring that out with our little bit of stitching. I'm starting off with a rust coloured, um, what is it? It's a pearl cotton, it's a bit thicker than normal. And I'm just doing some straight stitches up here just to uh, bring a touch of dark in. I just want to work it up slowly because it's a bit scary. But uh, I'm not sure where I'm going. I'm just thinking it'll be all right. So I'm just going up there and then I think, okay, well, I might use it. I've got a bit left and go around those uh, those circular shapes. So I've got two there up the top that are, that are interesting um, flowers, maybe. I actually have oh, four layers there of different things. That's really... Um, it's really got some interesting texture when you look into it, but I'm just wanting it to be a little bit more noticeable. So I'm going to use that rust colour and continue in a vague um, roundish shape that could be suggestive of a flower. And um, I'm not adding anything too, too much just yet. I'm just trying to, to think as I go. So I've mixed it up a bit around those flowers. I've used a rusty one and I've used a darker peach one. This is an exercise in using colour and tones anyway. Now I'm going to use a nice thread here and I'm going to do a little bit of just little seed stitches and I'm just doing it um, I don't know if you saw the previous episode, but one of the things that we trapped underneath that layer was a little um, round up kind of frayed ball of wool. And uh, that looks like a little delicate flower. So I'm just doing a few little seed stitches here and there down the bottom of that, just to sort of pick it out a bit. So I'll do a few little patches of these little tiny seed stitches and uh, they might suggest shading in some places or the feathery tops of those weedy kind of uh, looking things in the background and whatever else you choose to bring out in the design if you see something that looks like a leaf then go around that shape if you uh, wanted to bring some more lightness or dark into those flowers at the top use a different tone and do another line of stitches. When you're finished with one colour, take it through to the back, do a couple of stitches on top of each other and then just cut the thread. 
So I'm going to do the same here with those little seed stitches because I have another little um, ball of wool underneath that. So that's still pretty subtle. But I think now I'll try and uh, make something stand out a bit more. We have those white flowers there that we cut out and sandwiched underneath that gauze on top, the organza. And I'm just going to use this, uh, this colour here. And I'm just going to add in a running stitch here, in, around in a circle. And I'm just sort of saying I'm going to have a centre in this. I'm just starting to make it show out. But it's not, uh, certainly not dramatic at this stage. And I've got three flowers there so I'll just continue on and do the other two as well. You can do so much with a running stitch, just a single stitch. And it depends on the colour that you choose to use or whether you use a thick or a thin thread or whether you have uh, you know stranded cottons you can use a single strand or all of them six strands and it will make a completely different line okay let's grab this variegated one now it has some greeny browns and some orange so it'll help bridge the gap i think between the orange and the green but also that dark grey has got to come in. That's my dark. That pale pink that we had chosen originally. Still plenty to do. We could even take it to a brighter green. But look at those colours. Aren't they lovely together? So I'm going to grab this variegated that I was just talking about. And uh, it's a three different strands woven together so you can separate them. I don't want it that thick so that's what I'll do. So I've got my single strand of this one and it is in my needle. I've done a knot. I'm pulling it up from behind. Now I can see these ghostly images in behind of these sort of weed heads or branches or something. And I'm thinking I might just bring them out a little bit. Do a few stitches on there to just to make it look like they're the, the heads of the uh, of those weeds or you know the branches heading up there, whatever. But it's also adding a little bit of texture and a tiny bit of that different uh, variegated colour in there. So I'll just scatter a few little clusters of them around where I can see uh, where I imagine it to be and maybe just some little sprinkling of seed stitches or just something to give it a little bit a little bit of oomph not a lot of oomph yet I agree but you know it's all adding to it So there we are. I like that. That's okay. But what next? I'll do another little patch on this other side. I like to spread out small clusters. We'll see how that pans out later. So let's have a look at a closer look here and see how it's starting to come together with those little clusters there. But also, see on the right here, I've brought in the dark grey and out to the side I've used the full six strands of a stranded floss and it's very dark. But I don't mind, I wanted something dark. But that's enough. Now I'm going to, I could either use the dark one and less strands or the lighter coloured one. I'm going to do that and two or three strands will do me. So there we are, thread the needle and knot at the back. Let's have a look here. It looks quite effective, doesn't it? Just those little running stitch lines. Um, 
I'm just thinking where do I want to use this lighter grey it's not going to show up quite so much uh, can you see underneath we've trapped those bits of wool and they look like stems already don't they heading up I think I'll just add in a few more stems that's the idea and because this is a finer line and a lighter colour I'm not doing anything too drastic I'm still waiting to see where it's going but yeah just pick out a nice meandering line here I think then we'll go up and uh, especially when I can see that little pattern in in the background of that, what I think are like grasses or something so I'll do that and maybe do a few little branches off to the side of it sometimes just make it look more organic so just down to the bottom and little sprays up and we end up like this as you can see there and sometimes at the top I've made it look like little branches coming off it or just suggestions of whatever I can see see the darker branch right well is it a branch a stem whatever um, that is behind trapped behind all those layers we could have one coming out as well from there I can see more more lighter colored ones in the background and like I say the further it is in the background the lighter it is so it looks quite good that there's light and dark in those lines they would make great uh, winter trees that have lost their leaves a nice forest of them that would be a great way to do it uh, but no right now I'm thinking something else I think I'll bring in some of that green now and I'll do a little bit on the tops of those sort of grass heads grass seed heads something like that I think they are and if I just have it that sort of tinge of, uh, of green it will make it look more like it's alive or more weed like I hope don't allow yourself to become disheartened I go through all kinds of stages here but I don't mind making mistakes I like mistakes to lead me to something different than what I expected I don't I don't really mind when I make a mistake it's a it's a open pathway to creativity I quite often just uh, sew until I'm out of thread and that makes me go in another direction and use it there so what I'm doing now is just picking out a few more shapes with that green I'm going to do a few leaf kind of shapes just anything to suggest foliage see how I come out from the edge there and then I can turn around and come back in towards the flower in a vague leaf shape and that's a good enough suggestion so it's all subtle still look at that we're looking decidedly peaky but they are pretty we can go from there more green perhaps you could bring a totally different color in if you wanted um, yeah I virtually any color you wanted if it was the right shade I wouldn't bring in too many colors though that sort of uh, that gets away from this idea of tones
but this green is a slightly brighter version of what's gone before the previous greens. I'm just using it to I'll do a line, a curvy line across. There are so many layers here, so much to see. The deeper you look into it, the more that you do see. This is really going to uh, keep me amused, I think, for even another episode because I still want to bring in more colour. We're doing well, but I want more. I'm going to finish this video up whilst I'm thinking about French knots. And I've grabbed that pink and where I've got those woolly balls underneath the, uh, the organza there, I'm just going to start adding in just a little bit of the French knots. One, two, three around my needle, back in again. And that's it. I'm liking it. And I think there's places to go with it still. So I hope you'll join me next week. I hope you've enjoyed this one. And uh, thanks for watching. If you have liked it, don't forget to press like and subscribe. And next week we're going to do something brighter on it. In fact, here's a sneak peek.